Hello, podcast family. Hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to a new episode of Design Break Podcast. I'm your host, Rocky Rourke, and today we are diving into the third installment of our illuminating series on how communication can make or break your freelancing business. If you've been following along, you know we've covered the impact of the first email, first communications, and the essential elements that form the building blocks for a successful client relationship. But the conversation doesn't end there. In fact, it's only the beginning. So before we jump in, let's actually talk about today's hot topic, which is don't focus on perfection, focus on getting things done. This is something that I see a lot of designers do, no matter where you are in your career, whether you are an established designer, I'm guilty of it too. Uh, in fact, uh, all the way down to new, very green designers. And that is focusing on perfection. And honestly, the one thing I've learned, especially when it deals with client work, is that perfection is a killer of productivity. And a lot of times it's better to get things in front of a client while they're still like 50% to 80% of the way done uh, so that you can get validation. You know that you're on the right track because you don't want to be focusing so much on making something perfect and then the client doesn't like it. That's not good. That's very, very not good. So you want to make sure that you focus more on getting it out there, getting it done and getting it in front of the client's eyes before you go way too far down the wrong path. So remember, don't focus on perfection, focus on getting things done. And also the other thing I want to talk about right before we jump into today's episode is the listener of the week. These are listeners who are currently following us on social media, engaging with us on posts, who are uh, commenting on our YouTube videos, commenting on our shorts, uh, engaging with us, leaving uh, ratings and reviews and things like that. Uh, and this week's listener of the week is Corey Thomas. Thank you so much, Corey, for uh, tuning in, for uh, engaging with us on social media. You can find him on Twitter at Corey with a three and seven E Thomas. Uh, thank you again so much for tuning in. And again, if you would like to become a listener of the week, all you have to do is engage with us. We choose one random uh, listener from Twitter or YouTube or from our Apple podcast reviews. So be sure to do one of those three things. And who knows, you might even hear your name mentioned on the podcast. All right. So without further ado, let's dive in. Imagine this, your proposal got accepted. You've kicked off the project and your client is eagerly awaiting for updates. The decision you make now about how to keep your client informed and engaged can either pave the way for a smooth, successful partnership or create a shaky foundation filled with a lot of uncertainties on both your parts, on you and your client. So in this episode, we are going to be focusing on the absolute necessity of transparency in your process and progress when it comes to dealing with your clients. You know, we'll explore the key ingredients that make transparency not just a buzzword, but an actionable strategy that fosters trust, collaboration, and long-term client retention. You'll learn about the large range of tools at your disposal from project management software to good old fashioned scheduled updates and how each can play a part in keeping both you and your client on the same page. So whether you are a freelancer who's been in the game for many, many years, and, or you're just starting off in freelancing or in the design world uh, altogether, stick around. Today's episode promises to equip you with the insights to transform transparency from a concept to a concrete part of your business strategy. Are you ready to lift the veil and make transparency a cornerstone for you and your client relationships? then let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be touching on is just the importance of keeping clients updated. The number one thing that this does is it builds trust. Consistent updates can demonstrate your reliability, encouraging clients to see you as a dependable partner. You know, in another episode, I talk a lot about turning clients into partners, and this is one of the major steps is by being transparent. You know, trust makes clients more open to your creative suggestions and increases your influence in decision making processes. You know, transparency fosters trust, which is the cornerstone of any strong client relationship. It's actually the cornerstone of any relationship to begin with. And so it's very important that you use transparency, that you show what's behind the curtain. You don't have to show everything, but show a good bit to your clients so they understand what you are doing, how you're getting to where you are, and things like that. It's very, very important 
when it comes to building trust. The next thing too is setting expectations. This is probably something that you will hear so much throughout this entire series is just the idea of setting expectations. And that is because setting expectations keeps everybody on the same page and it makes sure that there's no real issues that pop up or at least mitigates that there's going to be issues that pop up. So, you know, updates provide a roadmap, letting the clients know what to expect. And by, you know, letting them know when you are going to be updating them, when you're going to be, you know, following up, when you're going to be, you know, reaching out for questions or information is very, very important. So properly setting expectations can easily avoid scope creep or last minute changes that are outside the initial agreement that you guys have set forth. You know, clear and timely updates set the stage for managing client expectations and reducing the likelihood of unpleasant surprises. This is something that I've constantly seen in my career as a freelancer, but not just as a freelancer, but just also working in house at companies is that you need to be able to set real expectations with everyone that you're interacting with. You don't want to promise them the world and then deliver, I don't know, a grand granular of dirt. <laughs> you know, something along those lines, but you, you really need to make sure that you, that you cover your bases and you set expectations, uh, in the form of when you're going to communicate, how you're going to communicate, um, and things of that nature. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And then the, uh, the other part too of that, and this is kind of what I alluded to was mitigating problems. You know, by being transparent in the way that you're working, the progress in which you are working, it really helps to set the stage and prevent these issues. You know, regular communication allows you to nip potential issues in the bud before they grow into major problems. This kind of goes back to the hot topic of today, which is, you know, making sure not to be perfect, you know, focus on getting things done. The same thing that I kind of was talking about there uh, earlier in the episode was, you know, by showing progress to clients earlier and by not pushing yourself to get things done perfectly to begin with, you are able to uh, mitigate any issues that creep up and make sure that you're going down the right path and you're not diverging onto the wrong path. You know, so transparency encourages a proactive approach to problem solving and often leading to quicker and less costly resolutions. Now, for one thing, we're freelancers. A lot of us probably are getting paid hourly. And so, you know, the more time we spend on something, the more money we make. However, we have to think about it from the client's perspective. You know, a lot of times if we can save them time, energy, and money by, you know, figuring something out earlier, by communicating with them, by sharing things in progress, then that's the best rate uh, route to go. Because if we can save them time and save them, you know, money, they're going to be like, okay, he's not just in it for the money. He's in it for being a partner with us. So keeping your clients updated enables both parties to identify and address issues early, saving time and resources. So the next thing is facilitating collaboration. So a lot of times when you are working with clients, one of the biggest issues that I hear is when they've worked with previous agencies, previous design studios or freelancers is the fact that there isn't a whole lot of collaboration. And so by being transparent in the process, by being transparent in what you are doing or how you can do it, it really helps to foster that trust that we talked about. It helps to really show that your client that you're a partner with them. Uh, for instance, today, right before I did this recording or right before I started doing this recording, I'm still doing it as of right now, um, I actually had a call with a client of mine, long-term client, and we were going over a set of designs and we actually jumped in together on the call and we started workshopping a design that we had started on and getting it to the point where it was finished by the end of the call. Now, a lot of uh, freelancers, a lot of designers, creatives out there feel like it's really bad or like they might hear that and think, oh my God, you literally workshopped an idea live on a call with a client in Figma? Yes, I did. Because it saved us a whole heck of a lot of time and we were able to do something that really made the client so happy. Over and over again, the client was like, oh my God, I am loving this. This looks so freaking cool. Thank you so much for doing this. The uh, other person on the call was like, I don't even know how you did that. That was amazing. Just watching me live make these changes and everything. 
you know, by doing that, it really helps to foster this camaraderie, this partnership and collaboration uh, with the client, which makes all the difference. So when a, a client is collaborating with you or feels like they're collaborating with you, they tend to feel more involved in the project, you know, which can lead to more constructive and timely feedback. You know, a more collaborative approach helps to tap into the client's expertise about their industry and their target audience. But more importantly, it just creates a very strong client freelancer relationship. So open communication, you know, turns the project into a collaborative endeavor and increases its chances of success. And that's why a lot of the times when I'm working with clients and I do these types of exercises, they turn into long-term clients. They're not just going to be there for one project and done because they like how I work, how I'm open to their feedback, open to trying out their ideas and everything. So it's very, very important to, you know, create a collaborative environment for your clients. The other two thing is that it really helps to improve accountability, you know, by going through and being transparent in your process, you know, you're able to not only be accountable for yourself, but you're also allowing the client to be accountable for what they agreed to at the beginning of the project, in the middle of the project, and at the end of the project. So documenting updates creates kind of like a history of the project's progress and challenges. So this record can be useful for post-project evaluations or in, or in instances where questions about the project arise. So a lot of times uh, by creating a record of the project or creating uh, some sort of communication record, whether it's through emails or Loom videos or Slack, though some Slack channels, like they scrub after 30 days, so it's probably not the best way of doing it. But by having something that creates a guaranteed record of what was talked about throughout the process of the project or the collaboration moments and things like that is very important. It also allows you as the freelancer, as the designer, to have material that you can use for writing case studies or writing marketing materials or writing process documents so that you can figure out and express how you go through and tackle specific projects that you can share with future clients or even just use it to figure out what's working and what's not working. So it's very important that you uh, record your conversations or your communications with your clients. You know, I'm not saying to go through and, and record their conversations without them knowing or anything like that, but keeping some sort of living document. I have here my notebook. Let's see, it's going to focus here. My leather notebook, it's a, actually a field note is in there. I carry this around with me everywhere. Uh, every single meeting that I have of a client, this notebook is out and I'm taking notes. And the whole reason why I do that is because I know that I need some sort of record of what's going on in the meeting, of what we're discussing, of you know what are the next steps on certain things. And so what I actually do is I go through and write on the notebook, let's see if you'll focus on this YouTube video, but I write a special code. I have FN, which stands for field notes, and then 24, which stands for, this is the 24th field note book. And then I put on the, the notebook the date that it was started. And then when I finished the notebook, I put the date that it ended or the last date that I put an entry in. And so what I can do is if I have a meeting with a client, I can write in there FN24.32. And I know that the notes from that meeting are in field notebook number 24 on page 32. And so by doing that, by, by keeping records like that, I'm able to go back in time and kind of figure out, like, let's say a client, you know, two months from now is like, well, wait a minute, you know, didn't we discuss or, or did we talk about any of this on our call back in uh, August? I can go back and look at my notes and say, um, I'm not seeing that or, oh, I see it right here. It looks like we talked about this. And generally, my notes aren't like fully like, you know, pages and pages and pages of a single meeting. Generally, what I will do is I'll write little bullet points uh, in my notebook. And then usually that will help spark my memories as I'm going through it. But that's the way my mind works. You might want to do something different. You might want to use the old or sorry, the old the new computer or uh, phone or AI tools in order to take your notes. And that's totally fine. 
So speaking of tools um, and note taking and everything like that, let's actually, you know, change gears and let's actually talk about tools and techniques for transparently sharing progress and process with your clients or with our clients. Let's make it us, us. All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is project management software. Now, for many freelancers, many designers out there, especially if you have worked in house uh, at an agency or at a startup, you know what I'm talking about when I say project management software. In fact, there might be a little bit of a sigh, of a sigh coming out or a, oh, God, why are we talking about this? Because a lot of times it can be stressful to have to keep up with project management softwares and be able to keep up with tasks and tickets and all that crazy stuff. Uh, I'm here to tell you that being a freelance business owner, you will have to deal with a whole heck of a lot of that. Uh, it is very important that you have some sort of project management software. Don't just use notebooks. Don't just use bullet journals or notepads or whatever it is that you uh, normally would. Don't just use your email. You know, having something is very important uh, to keep track of projects, you know, where everything is at, and also having something that you can show to your clients if need be. You know, so platforms like Asana and Trello are very user friendly uh, and can be easily shared with clients. It's something that usually is very set up uh, for small freelancers. I wouldn't go for Asana personally. I think it, if you have a larger organization, if you're a design studio or agency, Asana makes sense. For freelancers using things like ClickUp or Monday, or in particular, my favorite, which is what we use for Design Break uh, and for Blue Cyclops, my design studio, is Notion. You know, we use Notion for everything, for all tasks, for all management. Um, we do a lot of stuff uh, with clients where we actually build client dashboards, but we'll talk about that, I think, a little bit later in the episode. And so a lot of these, a lot of these things are being used constantly um, you know, to understand like where we are at on projects, to create tasks, to making sure there's accountability across uh, the team uh, and also our clients. So real time updates on these types of platforms uh, for using PM software and everything like that, you know, allow clients to see the project evolving, see like how it's progressing. Uh, you don't have to necessarily have like a client facing dashboard, but it is definitely important. So the bottom line here is project management software offers a centralized, transparent view into your progress or into your project status. And what I mean here is for the most part, it's not always about transparency with the client, but also transparency into your own process for yourself. And that's where project management software really comes in handy. Uh, there are some instances where it makes sense to also share that with clients. Uh, the other thing too is scheduling updates. So the whole thing about this, the whole thing about being transparent, about sharing progress, uh, you know, with your clients on projects, on tasks and everything comes down to when are you going to share that? Whether it's sharing once a week, whether it's a daily follow up, um, whether it is a, you know, every other day type of situation, scheduling meetings, et cetera, you know, establishing a cadence for updates weekly, biweekly, monthly, whatever it is ensures consistent communication. So the way that we do it is every Monday, we follow up with each of our clients and we generally will let them know, okay, these are the things that we are working on. Um, these are the things that we are currently waiting on feedback for or that are currently in review and basically allowing them to make sure that we are on the same page. So it allows them to see, okay, you're working on A, B, and C. Uh, actually, we we need you to move up D. D is something that was originally going to be starting next week. We actually need you to start it this week. And so it allows them to be a part of the communication and to collaborate with us. So by doing this, you know, by establishing this cadence really helps out. We also do a midweek check in with certain clients. If there's clients that really need more hand holding or need more attention, we'll have a uh, start of the week midweek and even an end of the week follow up. If there's clients who are waiting on large deliverables, we usually will follow up with them on Fridays, letting them, uh, giving them the uh, assets for them to review over the weekend and then following up again on Monday for any and all feedback for those types of projects. Just to give you an idea of like how we go about scheduling uh, updates. But by setting this, you know, specific type of cadence for projects or for interactions or for 
um, long-term engagements with clients is very important, especially if you want to come off as a professional and you want to uh, come off as a partner with your client. So the bottom line here is, you know, regular schedule updates are a straight, straightforward way to maintain a consistent line of communication with your client. And then this is what I was kind of alluding to, right? Client dashboards or portals. This is something that you can easily set up with ClickUp, uh, with Notion, um, I believe with almost every single PM software. This allows you to add another layer of professionalism to the way you interact with your clients. And again, it adds a whole nother view of transparency. So what I was talking about when I was talking about having, you know, some way for clients to look in and see like where things are at, where projects are at, it's very important. We have uh, two main clients that we work with right now that we use client portals or client dashboard in Notion, where they get to see a list of all the projects that we are currently working on the ones that we plan to work on and the ones that are currently in a backlog that haven't been started yet or haven't been scheduled yet. This allows them to see everything in the hopper, see everything at you know a glance of, okay, this is currently in review. We need to get you feedback on it. This is currently in progress. This is something that is so far in the back of our minds that we're not even touching it yet. And it really helps out overall. Clients really appreciate the convenience and transparency of a dedicated dashboard. So we, we've kind of talked about, you know, the planning of the projects or the transparency of the, you know, the projects and like where they are at and everything. Now let's actually talk about a tool that's very, very important for transparency and very important for communicating your thought process, which is Loom recordings. This is probably something that, you know, normally I would say just like video in general, but Loom recordings is, are very, very important for transparency you know visuals can often explain complex points way better than text and by actually sitting there and talking through your designs over a screen record you don't even have to be on camera you don't have to be looking at the camera like i am right here all you have to do is just you know be staring at your computer screen and watching your videos or watching uh or showing your your designs and everything and talking through you know this is why i chose this color for the cta this is why i decided to go with this typeface for the logo type. And so you're able to communicate and express your thoughts and feelings. And the best part is, is that it's not just a one-time thing and then it's gone. The client can watch it over and over. They can share it with any stakeholder they need to. And so it's a very, very powerful tool overall for uh, communicating and being transparent with your clients. The, the next thing to, um, the, or the last thing I'm gonna talk about when it comes to tools, cause we're gonna be having a whole episode on all of these where we're gonna go in so much more detail is Slack. Slack offers real-time communication and it's easy for file sharing. You know, it's perfect for organizing uh, different projects, different client groups. It's just honestly an excellent tool overall. We're, we're kind of like buttoning things up here with today's episode. And so let's just go over a couple of additional points. These are just some like additional pieces for transparency uh, that I feel like would be a good idea to just talk about. So the first part is change logs. You know, when it comes to any types of documents that you share with clients, any type of process documents or deliverables or anything like that, it's good to include in there a change log, especially if it's a site type of document that you're constantly sharing with clients, you know, not just one specific client, but all of your clients, like a capabilities deck or some sort of questionnaire or something along those lines. It's very important that you have some sort of change log so you know, all right, this has been updated on August 2023. Um, this is version four or something like that. But by going through and listing those things out, you're able to see, okay, this information hasn't been updated in two months, three months, four months, three years. And so you're able to know, okay, we need to go through here and make some updates. This stuff is probably very outdated and we could actually be harming ourselves and our reputation by sharing this old information. You know, it really helps to audit, you know, not just projects, but also these types of documents so that you make sure that you uh, cover yourself and cover all of your bases overall. So change logs are especially useful for complex or long-term projects, both external and internal, providing a granular level of transparency. Uh, the next thing too is virtual check-ins. So 
this doesn't necessarily have to be a scheduled meeting. It could just be a Slack communication or even a Slack huddle. I've been doing those quite a bit uh, lately, as well as, of course, using Loom videos. Uh, but what I do is with a lot of the people that I talk to directly at these uh, larger organizations is I actually will do a mental health check once or twice a week just to see like, how, is, how are they doing? How are, is their workload? You know, are they stressing about anything? And this allows me to number one, you know, show that I'm a partner, that I'm, you know, a human being that I'm interested in them and I'm interested in their well being, And I don't want to contribute to their stresses. Two, it also allows me to get an insight into any types of issues that might be going on. Um, if there's any problems that they're currently having or pain points they're having that maybe I might be able to solve in the future. And number three, it allows me, and this kind of goes with number two, but it allows me to see, okay, is there possibly a bumpy road on the horizon? Do I possibly need to watch out for maybe layoffs at this company or potentially a, a contract that's not going to be renewed, which is not good. So it's very important to have some sort of virtual check-in with individuals or just in clients in general, because you also want to know uh, if the client is happy, if there's anything that you need or anything you need to change about your process or what you're doing for them. And this then leads into uh, the next, the last part here, which is client surveys. This is something a lot of freelancers do not do. And they honestly should. It's something that I've started doing in the last uh, year. And it's something that I'm actually planning on doing in the next month or so is I'm going to be sending out a client survey to my long term clients. And surveys basically provide a quantitative and qualitative uh, feedback on your performance, um, how things have been going, you know, overall with projects, how happy clients are, how dissatisfied clients are. And so it really gives you an idea of like where you can improve and change. The other thing with client surveys is it's a perfect opportunity for social proof. It's a perfect opportunity for testimonials, you know, asking, you know, not only in the survey, you know, what's good, what's bad, but ask, would you mind giving us a testimonial that we can use for marketing purposes or social proof? But the other two thing is that it's perfect for asking for referrals or number three, asking if there's any additional projects or work they might need help with on the horizon, especially with clients who aren't long-term clients on retainers or some sort of system like that. So the bottom line here is post-product surveys or even just surveys in general with clients can give you a valuable insight into areas of improvement and client satisfaction. And one last thing I'll also add in there, it's the perfect opportunity for gaining metrics on how well a project uh, helped their client or how uh, how much you know money they got in funding because of a project or any types of bumps like, okay, the work that you did helped increase productivity by 50%. Great analytics and perfect for case studies. And that brings us to the end of another action-packed episode of the Design Break Podcast. I feel like I'm swinging from vine to vine instead of just standing here at a standing desk. Oh, well. Uh, I'm your host, Rocky Rourke, and today, you know, we've peeled back the layers on one of the most critical yet often overlooked aspects of freelancing, transparency in process and progress. We delved into the nuts and bolts of keeping your clients in the loop, why it matters, what tools can help you, and the impact it can have on long-term relationships. Remember, transparency isn't just about sharing updates. It's about building a culture of openness and accountability that can set the stage for more fruitful collaborations down the line. Before we sign off though, I want to encourage you to think about your current communication habits with clients. Are there any areas where you could be more transparent? You know, could employing some of these tools and techniques we discussed in today's episode help foster stronger, more reliable relationships? If you have found value in today's episode, please consider sharing it with a friend or colleague who might benefit from these insights. And as always, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to drop a comment or send us a message, a direct message on Twitter with your thoughts, questions, or suggestions for future episodes. But that's it for me for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and special thanks to all of those who have been following us since the start, listening to the podcast and during our breaks in time where we didn't post anything. Hopefully this is making up for it with all of these new episodes, but 
thank you again for for just listening to this episode and listening to this whole series if you have if you haven't go check back at episodes one and two and also be on the lookout for episode number four which is dropping next week uh you will not want to miss it until next time always remember to stay passionate stay positive and stay creative that is it for me for this episode bye